In February 2025, scientists discovered something shocking about our planet's insides. We've long thought that Earth's inner core is a solid and stable sphere. But the truth may be quite different and a bit alarming. The recent study suggests that the surface of the core might be undergoing structural transformations right at this moment. Researchers from the University of Southern California have analyzed decades of seismic data and discovered that the surface of the inner core appears to deform under the influence of the outer core. We've observed such changes for the first time, but they're likely to explain some peculiarities in the rotation of the inner core. They could even be influencing the length of days on Earth. Now, the inner core of our planet, located about 3,100 miles below the surface, is traditionally described as a solid ball of iron and nickel. However, new data shows that its outer layer may be more malleable than expected. This discovery is based on the analysis of seismic waves from repeated earthquakes near the South Sandwich Islands. The researchers used enhanced resolution techniques to study these seismic signals. They observed anomalies in the waves and made an unexpected conclusion. There must be deformations on the surface of the inner core, and they could be caused by turbulent interactions with the molten outer core. Now, this outer core, composed of liquid iron and nickel, has a highly important role. It helps generate Earth's magnetic field. Before, we really didn't understand its impact on the inner core. But now, the new study shows that the turbulent movements of the outer core could disrupt the surface of the inner core, and that could cause changes in its shape. These disturbances might also explain the gradual slowdown in the rotation of the inner core. Scientists have been observing it since 2010. On the surface, we really don't notice these changes but they could influence Earth's overall rotation and length of days. The study can help us understand better what's happening deep inside our planet, how the inner and outer core interact, and how that affects Earth's magnetic field and movement. Obviously, direct observation of Earth's core is impossible. That's why scientists use indirect methods, like analysis of seismic waves. It also allows us to deduce the structure and composition of the core. As these waves pass through different layers, they get deflected or stopped. And this can provide us with clues about the nature of the materials they encounter. There are also laboratory experiments. Researchers reproduce the extreme pressures and temperatures of the core and study the behavior of iron-nickel alloys. They use sophisticated instruments, such as diamond anvil cells and they allow exploration of these extreme conditions. Then there are studies of meteorites. The thing is, some of them come from asteroids with a metallic core like Earth's. Their chemical composition sometimes provides clues about the elements present in Earth's depths. Scientists can also create numerical models. By combining seismic, experimental, and geochemical data, they simulate the internal dynamics of our core. But what would happen if Earth's core suddenly stopped spinning altogether? Well, it's unclear, but we can make assumptions. If it was just the solid inner core that stopped, the answer would be, eh, not much. Even if it didn't just slow down its movements, which is happening right now, but stopped altogether, the main impact would be on the speed of Earth's rotation. Our days would get longer. Over time, it could weaken the planet's magnetic field, which would be bad news, but not as catastrophic as what would happen if the outer core stopped spinning. That's when things would get seriously bad. Without the rotation of the outer core, Earth would lose its magnetic field, and the loss of this protective shield would set off a catastrophic chain reaction. First off, tectonic plates would start colliding in chaotic ways. Imagine being on a bus when the driver suddenly slams on the brakes and you go flying into other passengers or on the floor. The planet would experience something similar, but with tectonic plates. Ew! These violent collisions would cause massive earthquakes along plate boundaries worldwide, shaking buildings, bridges, and roads. Water systems, electricity, and phone lines would be destroyed in the chaos. But this would only be the start. 
Without the magnetic field, cosmic radiation would start hitting Earth's surface. These high-energy particles from the Sun would interact with the oxygen and nitrogen in our atmosphere, damaging the ozone layer. This would allow even more radiation to reach Earth's surface, causing even more damage. Electronics would fail, power grids would collapse, and communication systems would go dark. But the effects wouldn't be limited to just humans. All forms of life would be at risk. Many animals, like migratory birds and turtles, rely on Earth's magnetic field for navigation. With it gone, they would be completely lost. Birds would lose their sense of direction, and turtles wouldn't be able to find the beaches where they need to lay their eggs. Luckily, we don't need to worry about this apocalyptic scenario anytime soon. The outer core of Earth is very unlikely to stop spinning in our lifetime, or ever. So for now, we're safe. But to truly understand Earth, you need to go 4,000 miles beneath our feet. Earth has four main layers, from the very center to the surface. The inner core, outer core, mantle, and crust. Now, except for the crust, no one has ever explored these deeper layers in person. The deepest humans have drilled is just over 7.5 miles, and that took 20 years to achieve. At the very center of Earth is the inner core, a solid metal ball about 758 miles in radius, which is about three-quarters the size of the Moon. It sits about 4,000 to 3,200 miles below the surface. Made mostly of iron and nickel, the inner core is incredibly dense. It spins a bit more slowly than the rest of Earth and is intensely hot, reaching temperatures of 9,800 degrees Fahrenheit. It's like the surface of the Sun. The pressure there is staggering, over 3 million times greater than the pressure we feel on the surface. Some research even suggests that there might be an even smaller, denser core inside the inner core, thought to be made mostly of iron. The outer core is also made of iron and nickel, but in liquid form. It sits about 3,200 to 1,800 miles beneath the surface. The heat here comes mostly from the radioactive decay of elements, like uranium and thorium, causing the liquid to churn in massive, turbulent currents. This motion creates electrical currents, which generate Earth's magnetic field. Interestingly, Earth's magnetic field reverses about every 200 to 300,000 years, and scientists are still trying to figure out exactly why it happens. The mantle is Earth's thickest layer stretching almost 1,800 miles deep. It starts just around 19 miles beneath the surface. Made of iron, magnesium, and silicon, it's dense, hot, and semi-solid. To imagine it better, think about caramel candy. Like the outer core, the mantle also circulates, but it moves much more slowly. Closer to the upper edge of the mantle, between 62 to 124 miles underground, the heat is so intense that it melts rock. This creates a partially melted layer of rock called the asthenosphere. Geologists think that this soft, hot, and slippery layer is what allows Earth's tectonic plates to move and slide. Some of the diamonds we find on Earth come from the mantle. Most of these diamonds form at depths above 124 miles. But rarer, super-deep diamonds may form as deep as 435 miles. These diamonds are brought to the surface by a certain kind of volcanic rock called kimberlite. The outermost part of the mantle is cooler and more rigid, behaving more like the crust above it. Together, this uppermost part of the mantle and the crust are called the lithosphere. As for the crust itself, it's the outermost layer of Earth. It's about 25 miles deep and makes up only 1% of the planet's mass. And yet, it holds all known life in the universe. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.